Welcome to my new short-term save. What is a save, you ask? Well, it's a save where I'm gonna win myself unlimited pizza. How am I gonna win myself unlimited pizza? Well, Football Manager, in conjunction with Papa John's, the pizza company, have launched a new competition where you can win tickets to the Papa John's trophy final, a year's worth of pizza, or even just some free pizzas, some other prizes in there as well. So there's VIP tickets to Wembley for the Papa John's final, including lunch with the mystery manager. There's other ones, including chance to present the Papa John's trophy at the Papa John's final. 100 free pizzas for different winners and five years supply of Papa John's pizza. Also, a couple more tickets for the Papa John's trophy final and an FMFC shirt. So we're going to try and win this. I really want, actually, to be honest, I really want the FMFC shirt. But to go to the Papa John's trophy final would be pretty cool too. Unfortunately, Pompey are not in it this season. That is my team, Portsmouth Football Club. Now, we did win the Papa John's trophy a few years ago and we lost in the final. We won it in 2018-19 and then in 2019-20, which was delayed because of COVID, we lost it to Salford in the final. So Portsmouth have a little bit of history in this tournament. In fact, that 2019 final between Portsmouth and Sunderland it's featured on Sunday until I die, had the highest attendance of an EFL trophy match. So I'm gonna try and win myself maybe one of the shirts, maybe some pizzas, maybe a year's supply of pizza, or a trip to the EFL trophy final. You can too, I'll leave the details down below. I'm just not sponsored or anything, but if you wanna enter yourself, don't go beating me, but if you wanna enter yourself, the details are down below. All you've gotta do is win the EFL trophy with a club from League One, or League Two. So we're gonna try that. Of course, I'm gonna try it with Pompey, which is my team. I have put my lucky FA Cup winning trophy shirt up there. This is the shirt that we won the 2008 FA Cup with Pompey. But before we dive into that, maybe I should give you a little bit of history of Portsmouth Football Club. Founded in 1898, it was not the first Portsmouth FC, but it's the one that still exists today. There was a team that played for the Royal Artillery, not the Navy, the Artillery, the Army. There was also Portsmouth Town FC and Portsmouth AFC. But it's in 1898 that we see the formation of Portsmouth Football Club as we know it today. Now, Portsmouth didn't enter the Football League system until 1920. In 1920, they entered into Division Three. By 1924, they found themselves in Division Two. And by the late 20s, they were up in Division One, where we had a nice little spell in Division One. Now, we started to look good in the early 30s, but it wasn't until the late 30s that we got our first major trophy, and it was that FA Cup. In 1939, Portsmouth won the FA Cup, and they still hold this record today. They held it for the longest period of time. When football resumed in the 40s, Portsmouth went on to win the top division title in 1949 and 1950. That makes Portsmouth one of only five English teams to have won back-to-back -back titles since the Second World War, when we beat Aston Villa 5-1 on the final day of that 1950 season. This time period also saw perhaps Portsmouth's most successful footballer, Jimmy Dickinson. He played 48 games for England during the same time period from 1949 to 1956, making him Portsmouth's most capped English player of all time. He played his entire career at Portsmouth from 46 until 1965, and he was later our manager in the 1970s. But despite the great Jimmy Dickinson, after 1950, Portsmouth didn't have much success for a long period. They dropped out of Division One at the end of the 1960s, and it took only two years in Division Two before they were down in Division Three. They won Division Three back up into Division Two, but the subsequent years saw them flipping between Division Two, II, Division Three, and Division Four, despite a brief interlude in Division One in 1987. They do return to Division one in 1992 but that's sort of on a technicality because the Premier League was formed and all the teams moved up a division and there Portsmouth languished until 2002-2003 with Harry Redknapp at the helm Paul Merson in midfield Portsmouth finished first surprisingly in division one what is now the championship it changed to a championship a year or two after and found themselves promoted into the Premier League for the first time in their history. That Premier League era with Milan Mandaric as chairman and Harry Redknapp as the manager for the majority of it saw some real ups and downs, but some great players played for the club. Yakubu, Lomalu Walawa, Kanu, Benjani, Peter Crouch, Defoe. We, all, we saw Teddy Sheringham playing for the club. Cranshaw, Glenn Johnson, David James, Sol Campbell, all these players went through the club. Lasana Diara, who of course went on to play for Real Madrid. Montari, who went on to play for Inter Milan, only retired just recently last year. Patrick Berger had a spell with Portsmouth after his Liverpool spell. It's true, maybe some of these players weren't at the peak of their career when they played for Portsmouth, but we've had some greats go through the club nonetheless. Arguably the best seasons for Portsmouth were 2006-2007 and 2007-2008, where we finished ninth in 2007 and 8th in 2008, but that was capped off with a win in the FA Cup. We'd signed Jermaine Defoe that season, but he was cup-tied, so it was up to Kanu in the final to poke home that goal against Cardiff City and earn Portsmouth that first FA Cup win since 1939. The following season saw us re-sign Peter Crouch and have a 2-2 draw with AC Milan 
in a fantastic match where Portsmouth were two goals in front for much of the game. It took the legend Ronaldinho to turn the game around. But it's here where Portsmouth's tail turns for the worst. All that money spent during the Premier League era has come back to haunt the club. The owner Sasha Gardamek starts to try to asset strip the club. He sells it off in part to Suleiman Al Fahim. Gardamek's money was always in question. I'm going to put an allegedly here. He always claimed it was his own money, but his dad was arrested in October 2009 by a French court for organizing arms trafficking in Angola. He also has alleged connections with the Russian mafia and money laundering through Israeli banks. Our subsequent owner, Al Fahim, was involved in that massive Manchester City deal that saw the Abu Dhabi royal family take over Manchester City, and that got Portsmouth fans pretty excited. What we didn't know was he'd stolen all the money to buy Portsmouth from his wife, and he was convicted of this in 2018. Well, the fit and proper person test can't fail Portsmouth Club a third time, can it? Yes, it can. Enter Ali Al Faraj. Did he exist? Portsmouth fans are a little bit skeptical about whether he even exists. He might be a pseudonym for Bauram Shanrai, who was the subsequent owner of Portsmouth Football Club, but he purchased Portsmouth Football Club allegedly to cover some debts owed by the previous owner, Sasha Gaidamek. He did this though with a big loan which he defaulted on from Bauram Shanrai. At the same time, HMRC comes knocking at Portsmouth Football Club asking for some unpaid tax to be paid. So within two years of that FA Cup win, we see Portsmouth on the brink. Bauram Shanrai comes in, purchases the club, and somehow again passes that fit and proper person test. And Portsmouth is given a nine point penalty in the Premier League basically confirming their relegation that season. We did once again reach the FA Cup final, but this time we lost out to Chelsea in a tight match. We missed the penalty, Drogba runs up the other end, and that's it. We did qualify for the Europa League, but we were denied being able to play because of those financial issues that we were having. So Rabbaram Shamwai now owns the club down in the championship, but he is not really a willing owner of Portsmouth Football Club. He decides to sell the club on. Gaidamek is still involved in the background as a creditor. On the 1st of June, the club is sold to Converts Sports Initiative, owned by Russian Vladimir Antonov. Okay, things are starting to look good for Portsmouth. 1st of June, we got new owners. They've just come in, Russians backing the football club down in the championship. But fast forward four months, and I'm sure you can guess what might have happened. Yes, that's right, a European-wide arrest warrant for the Portsmouth owner Vladimir Antonov by Lithuanian prosecutors for an asset stripping a Lithuanian bank, and then he was later convicted of fraud and embezzlement. What a great set of owners we've had here. Fit and proper person test is certainly working out. So Antonov resigns as chairman of Portsmouth while he is under bail, and Portsmouth are then issued with a winding up petition from the tax office once again for 1.6 million in unpaid taxes. And again, we enter into administration and we again get a 10 point deduction while down in the championship. With the relegation to League One, the entire professional playing squad left, leaving Portsmouth no players whatsoever, forced to play with some youth players for a large part of the season. Again, we were given another 10 point deduction down in League One. Baron Shamrai turns up again, tries to buy the club again, fails in his attempt to buy the club. Fortunately, the fans take over the club and they take over the assets that Bauram Shamrai, Gaidamek and others had collected and asset stripped over the years, forced to give them over in a way because they couldn't buy the club themselves. Even though a deal with administrators was reached, Portsmouth were once again relegated, this time down to League Two in free fall from that Premier League just four years earlier. Portsmouth then find themselves on the brink of the conference, nearly being relegated in that first season down in League Two. It's turned around late in the season, just about. The club is also made debt free in 2014, a big change in the fortunes for the club, thanks to the fans, in most part, who backed the club, managed to get the dodgy owners out of the club and find themselves stable, let's say, in League Two. But it's not where we want to be. We want to be back up in the Premier League someday. In 2017, Portsmouth see themselves promoted back into League One and they have languished there since. But also in that 2017 window, we saw the club taken over by the Tornate Company, headed by the former chief executive of Disney, Michael Eisner, who's overseen a whole load of stuff at Disney over the years. Some of the most famous Disney movies were under his directorship. And now his company owns Portsmouth Football Club. Several player failures since we're still stuck there in League One. We did have that one Papa John's trophy. And that's what I'm gonna try and win today. Another Papa John's trophy for the club. I'll try getting promoted too, if I can, but my priority is unlimited pizza. So welcome to Portsmouth Football Club. In the next video, I'm gonna be looking at some transfers that I can make for Portsmouth FC to see if I can get them back where we belong. And I guess it's only fitting with the former Disney CEO as our owner. I'm gonna say welcome to the Mickey Mouse Club. Now, while you wait for that next video, why not go check out this video I did on British Wonder Kids that you can sign. British Super Wonder Kids, 16 year olds that you can sign into your team that might make a difference. I might get some of them here at Portsmouth. So uh, go check that one out.